Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well, and uh, welcome to another video. This time I'm doing a video here in the garage. It's absolutely hideous outside, it's absolutely chucking it down, blowing a gale the whole nine yards. You know what it's like here in Blighty in winter. Anyway, I thought it was high time I did another little update here in the garage to tell you some things that are going on on my bike. So uh, if you're interested in a bit of a look around, some of the stuff that's going on with the bikes that I actually own and run, stick around, stay tuned, and I'll tell you all about it. All right, well, first job of the day, first little thing that I thought I would uh, tackle, something that's been annoying me for a while uh, here in the man cave, is to do with the mighty gold wing. Uh, and that is something that I've uh, come across before and something that's fairly easily fixed. And that basically is thin paint where your legs go. I don't know if you can see this, but on my gold wing, there is a bit of a um, mark there. It looks like, a bit like a smudge. Can you see that in the light? I don't know if you can see that. It's not actually a smudge, that are, those are little tiny scratches where my knees have been on the bike. It's the same on the other side. Uh, this often happens on new bikes where you don't have any sort of protection. On the Panigale, I had some um, paint, for some special paint film put on here. You can just see the edges of it, look here, maybe in the light, can you see the edges of it? So where my legs go on here, never a mark, because it's got a, a thin film that I could peel off, and that would be all absolutely fine. Uh, on the street uh, triple, when I bought that, I thought of this beforehand, and I put on these um, stripes and a little spot here as well. And they've, uh, you know, it's, I don't know whether you think they look any good or not, I think they look okay actually on here uh, and also a tank pad, pad on the back as well and hence that one has stayed absolutely fine so uh, I'm thinking I need to do something similar to the gold wing so what I'm going to do is get some sort of uh, teacup type material try and polish out these scratches which should be possible because they're not um, they're not too deep and then put on some um, stripes and spots similar way to what I did with the uh, street triple so that they get protected in future so that's job number one let's crack on with that right get the old gloves on very important to protect your skin when you're dealing with the uh, strange substances so for this little polishing job what i'm going to use is something that's a bit like teacup you can use any of these sort of things I'm, i use this stuff it's called a g3 professional paint renovator i bought this for use on my cars uh, it's from a company called Farkla. I'm not saying this is the best or anything like that or in any way trying to sell it to you it's just what happened to have in the cupboard but teacup anything like that will do it's described as a um uh, an engineered diminishing abrasive particle paint renovator. So in other words, it's got some little abrasive bits that you rub on and hopefully get rid of those swell, swell marks. Now the way you do this is you use an applicator pad like this, which I've dampened with a bit of water. You just put a tiny amount on, like so. And then very lightly in the horizontal and then uh, vertical position um, directions, you just rub it on there and uh, hopefully we'll get rid of, well in fact, let's do it. Let's do it circular. What am I talking about? Here we go. So you just do this basically the longer you do this the better the results will be so just bear with me while i do this right once you've done that for what seems like an age get yourself a lovely fresh new microfiber cloth polish off the excess and see if we've uh, lost that little smudgy look Right, now I can see immediately from where I'm sat that the little smudge has gone. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Let's, uh, I'll move it over and see if we can. There's still lots of little fine scratches on there that will take proper um, professional paint restoration. And maybe I'll get that done at some point on the bike. But the little um, smudgy bit that looked like it was a smear or something, that's definitely gone. Let me show you. Can you see? There are some very light scratches in there still, but the little smudgy bit has gone. Right, having prepared that area to be protected, next thing to do then is to position the... Um, protection on there which is some spots and stripes that I bought same sort of thing as I got for the uh, street triple all those years ago here they are uh, just got these off of eBay they're literally like four quid or something each I got one set for each side I'm gonna put some masking tape down the side of the bike so I can position them and just stick them on and hopefully that'll be the protection sorted right not sure how many of these I need I bought four of these each so I'm thinking now just wondering where how I should align these best whether to just go maybe three across the middle and then just a couple of spots down here perhaps or whether it's going to look best all four along that way level with the bottom i think four along that way level with the bottom of the bike here this crease and then maybe a spot or two either side let's go with that so i'm just going to put a bit of masking tape along level with that crease so that i can get them all exactly level famous last words going on there and then you get one shot at this course so 
box just to rip those across there actually and see if we can actually get four in. Yeah. I think that'll work on it. Let's go with that then. I'm gonna get one go at this. Let's see if we can not muff it up. One. Two. looking good and then some spots do we go along the bottom or do we go along the edge I think middle and middle should do it let's take that off now good. Actually, that looks quite cool I quite like that let's have a spot someone there Not that my leg's ever going to reach up that far, but just for symmetry's sake. And then they, these stand quite proud. They're probably a millimetre, millimetre and a half proud. So when my leg's on there, it won't be rubbing on the paint. That's the general idea. Should we put another spot here, perhaps? One there, one at the bottom. A few more. I've got some more. I could do a whole run. I could go down there. Hmm. Might be a bit much. What about along there? Hmm. I think we'll just leave it like that for now. All right, that's that side done. I'll. Uh, do it on the other side and uh, we should be done. All right, then that's the first little job done here in the garage. I think that looks all right. Check that out. There we go. Got the uh, spots and stripes on there. Don't think it looks too bad. If it annoys me over time, if I think it does look silly, then I'll just take them off. Uh, and I've got exactly the same on the other side in exactly the same position done in exactly the same way. So uh, yeah, quite pleased with that. That's just something that's been annoying me for a little while. Uh, next job is gonna be on the Panigale, but before we get to that, just a couple of things I want to tell you about. First off, uh, my Speed Twin here. Do you remember I did a, uh, you may have seen a video I did comparing the Speed Twin, uh, my 2019 with the current 2021, 2022 model year. One of the things that I loved about the new bike was its handling, it felt much better. And something that a lot of people said was that maybe the handling is down to the fact that the tires on the new Speed Twin has been change on this one I've got the uh, uh, Diablo Rossos uh, on here but the new one has got the uh, Metzler I can't remember Metzler something or other I can look it up but I was wondering whether to change the tyres on the Speed Twin to the Metzlers and see if that had a big made a big difference on the handling what do you think do you think it's worth doing a bit of hassle to change them out there's absolutely nothing wrong with the existing tyres on here but just thinking if it does make this bike handle as well as the new bike or a bit closer that'll be an upgrade well worth doing stick your comments below let me know if you think that will work or not and if you think it will I'll do it Right, moving on. Next up, just wanted to mention my Garsman Barrier. Uh, if you don't know, um, Image4 Security that make the Garsman Barrier are sponsors of the um, channel. So you'll see their uh, logo on the start and end of each of my videos. Or well, recently, uh, they did a little customization job on my barrier and they've given maybe some little um, TMF stickers look, which I'm very pleased with. So I've got a little bit there, it says TMF there. It's all good. Anyway, the point is I've had the barrier now well over a year. It gets used multiple times a day and it's going fine. If you fancy one of these, I've still got a discount. Details below, TMF50 will get you 50 quid off of a Garsman barrier. All right, a little bit of an advert there, but they're great um, gadgets if you've got multiple bikes or indeed cars that you want to protect. All right, next little job then to do with the Panigale. Here she is, my beautiful sports bike. Don't ride it very much, but I absolutely love it. Um, now, something has come to light, which uh, somebody spotted on my behalf and uh, was a little bit worrying. Let me tell you the story. So here we have, usual sort of sports bikey thing. Um, they have I think they're called lock stops that stop you turning the handlebars too far. And on sports bikes and indeed other bikes as well, they have um, various ways of doing this. On the Panigale, if I show you, if I move here, can you see... Uh, let's bring the camera around this way. Right, can you see down here, look, just there, that bit there, see where that little thread is and a nut on there? That is the lock stop, so that when I turn the handlebars the other way, I'm gonna be in the way to do this, but that stops the handlebars going too far. Let me see if I can demonstrate. You see, it goes along, uh, there we go, and it goes that way. Where's it? There we go, and it touches. You can't see it, but it's, it only goes so far because of course it physically stops it. All right, fair enough. And you see how that is um, mounted, that screw on a little tab physically on the yoke top. 
All right, remember that, because if we come to the other side here, and I move this, got there in the end, you'll see here, look, can you see down here? I don't know if you can see that, but where that lock stop should be on this side, look, there's just a broken tab. Can you see that? Just where the metal has broken off. On the top of the oak, the tab's gone along with the thread. And uh, that is bad news because number one, it means you can turn the handlebars further than they need to be. And the other really bad news is that means it's an MOT fail. If, uh, if I took this for an MOT, it would fail now with that. So a bit of an issue there. So what to do about that then? Well, obviously I thought I'd better give my local Ducati dealer a ring that is on your bike over just north of Aylesbury. Gave them a call. They're the people that look after my bike usually service it. Excellent service organisation. They're really helpful. Uh, anyway, I explained to them what had happened. It turns out it's a relatively frequent thing on a Panigale. Uh, so I said, can you give me a quote for how much uh, to fit basically one of those new... Um, whatever those bits are called, triple clamp at the top, uh, or yoke, whatever I called it before. Um, how much is one of those gonna be to fit? Because of course you're gonna have to take the forks out, basically the wheels out, everything, to get that fitted in there. And basically they quoted me about 700 quid, so an extremely salty fix. However, they voluntarily volunteered to me that you don't actually need to do that. They said, get onto the RNG website, because they make some stuff that you can fit to the Panigale that gets around that and means that it won't be an MOT failure and gives you the safety of uh, having a lock stop. So I went onto the RNG website and got these things. They're called lock stop savers. You can get them for all sorts of bikes, but all the Panigales. So it just shows how uh, often this happens. And basically, there's some little stops that you bolt onto the top of the um, triple clamps, yokes type things. I'll show you where in a sec. Uh, and it basically gives you new stops. So that means you've, you've got the um, safety and security of not moving the handlebars too far if you get into a tank slapper or whatever. And of course, it now means it won't be an MOT failure. So I'm gonna pop those on if I can work out how. Let's see how that works. So, had a look at the RNG website to see how these things attach. Apparently on the Panigale, it's pretty simple. They're just two nuts to undo, or bolts, uh, and you put them on here. So let me show you. So you see here with the handlebars turned in that direction, you see this little uh, bolt here? You just unscrew that and you put the new stop on there and there's another one on the other side. Can you see that? Uh, and they just fixed there and that gives you effectively the same thing whoops mike's caught same thing uh, as the proper lock stops but it cost me like 15 quid from rng so i'm going to attempt to fit those now i'll show you when i've done them all right let's get these out of the pack then there's some uh, instructions i'll look at that and then these are the actual gadgets themselves some sort of uh, like little nylon stop things with some cable ties and then some little brackets that go around those front bits how hard can it possibly be to fit these let me read the instructions and i'll find out one of those sort of instructions. Okay, I'll check it out on the web and uh, I'll come back to you. Oh, this newfangled thing is right. Is it going to detect it? Come on. Fabulous. There we go. Instructions. Right, I'll read them. See what's involved. Remove the bolt arrow in the top picture. Place the bolt through the aluminium mounting bracket and secure as shown. Repeat for the other side. You may also have to use a cable tie supply to ensure none of the cables can snag or become trapped in operation at full lock position on both sides. Seems very easy. I'll crack on. Right, first thing. Need to, can't get that in with my hands. That needs to go in there. I'm just going to squeeze it in using the vice if I can. Try not to crush my fingers while I'm at it. Or indeed, ruin the bracket. And go, there we go. Perfect. Alan Milliard would be proud. All right, let's see if I can do this one-handed. Probably can't. Come on. There we go. I'll tell you what, you get the general idea. I'll fit it and then I'll show you afterwards. It's too hard to do one-handed. Right, all done. Very clever little fix that. Let me show you in here. Can you see, look, so that's where they fix one there and there's one on the other side the same. And then when you move the... Uh, handlebars one side to the other look if you can see when you go that side look that one is touching on the fork there and then when you go the other way you see the fork touches on it there and it acts as a as a uh, lock stop as it were and it's butted up to the actual frame here as well so it's not gonna it's just that nylon onto the frame so it's very strong and ain't gonna be a problem so that's a that's a really little nifty solution to that problem so thank you to the guys that on your bike for letting me know about that I think it was about 17 quid from the RNG website instead of 700 quid if I'd replaced that broken off tab. So a uh, nice one. Brill, so that's two excellent little jobs done that have been niggling at me for ages. So I'm glad I've got those done. That's excellent. So just uh, one other thing, I guess, to say, the eagle-eyed ones amongst you will have noticed that in the garage here, if you have a look around, there's, uh, there's Carol Suzuki that she's borrowing to learn to ride. My GS, of course, Goldwing, Street Triple, Speed Twin, Panigale, 
of course, the bike that's missing still is my custom Royal Enfield Interceptor. It went back uh, to uh, the bike den who's doing the work. If you remember, I made a little video titled something like what's wrong with my custom Interceptor. There are a few changes I want doing to the bike. That is being worked on now. So those side panels that had the TMF logos, that's being changed. I'm going to have uh, Interceptor 650 custom written on there instead, which is going to look good. The back end's getting changed. It's going to have a mud guard on the back much more like the street triple in fact i am having sorry much more like the speed triple in fact i am having a speed triple mudguard on the back but painted green and some lights i'm going to get some um, handlebar end mirror indicators as well at the front so it's going to look absolutely brilliant so uh, i'm in touch with the guys they're doing the work there hopefully we'll get that back soon and then i'll make you that video all about how that how much the whole thing has actually cost me so that's coming up soon so stick around for that and then when that bike does come back what i'm going to do is add to it the latest monomoto tracker let me show you this Right, so another sponsor of the channel that you will have heard me talking about before is Monimoto. You will see their logos on the start and finish of my videos, and you'll know that I'm a big fan of Monimoto Tracker. So I've got myself the latest Monimoto Tracker to put on the Enfield when that comes back. This is called the Monimoto 7, as you can see. It's got lots of improvements over the old Tracker. Works in a similar way with the key fob, so when you're away from the key fob, it arms itself and sends you its position on a map. So if you haven't seen how that works, go and check out my video of how the Monimoto works. Uh, this is kind of the same, but this one, as I say, has got better connectivity. This works with uh, LTE, as opposed to just 2G, 3G, so many more phone networks. Uh, it's got a battery life of um, a year, which is incredible. It's a different form factor, so it's a bit easier to hide on the bike. In fact, I'll get it out of the box in a minute and show you what it looks like. And uh, So overall, this, uh, for me, is a great uh, little security device to stick onto the Royal Enfield when it comes back. Oh, the other thing as well about this is it runs on uh, two normal batteries as opposed to um, the little pen batteries that were hard to get hold of, so it's a bit easier to run as well. Let me open it up for you. There are, I think, about 167 quid, something like that, to buy, and then it's about 30 quid a year for the SIM contract. So once you've got it, just 30 quid, and the beauty of these is they don't run your battery out on your bike like the more expensive trackers do. Here we go, that's what it looks like, different form factor, just small and thin. You can stick it under your seat or whatever, as long as the GPS part is pointing up, you'll be good. Uh, batteries go in the back there comes already supplied with batteries you don't even have to worry about that and then you've got the little key fob in here as well there we go that looks like that you just keep that on your person basically when it's fitted to the bike once these are apart this automatically arms and starts to send you its location when these are near together it disarms and it knows that uh, all is well that's basically how it works anyway there we go so the monimoto 7 is uh, going to go on the infield when that's back oh and if you fancy a monimoto 7 as well i'll stick a link below as to where you can get those so there we go, that's just about it for this little bonus extra video. I hope you found that of some interest. That's what's been going on in my garage anyway. When the weather's horrible as it is today, you might have even heard some of the rain bashing off the uh, garage door as I've been talking. Um, this is the sort of thing I like to so just tinkering in my garage. That's part of the fun of owning motorbikes, isn't it? Anyway, uh, just for completeness, uh, street triple over there. Nothing changed on that, all running fine. I haven't ridden it for a while, but I absolutely love this bike. This is the bike I keep thinking, should I replace this with a street fighter from Ducati? But every time I ride this, I think to myself, actually, what am I gonna gain for that extra cash? And I exchange. I exchanged some messages with my favourite journo, uh, Michael Neves, via Instagram, uh, and said, should I replace this with the new Street Fighter, the small one, the uh, 950? Um, and uh, he basically said it wouldn't give me anything this, that the Street Triple doesn't already have, other than maybe bragging rights, so I'm going to keep it, so thank you, Michael, for that bit of advice. And here's the trusty GS as well. Uh, again, don't think I've got anything to report on here. I took the grip puppies off, um, just because I was finding that they were a little bit restricted this time of year with the heated grips, uh, in that you couldn't really feel the heated grips through them as well as I'd like. So I've taken those off, so I'm going to give that a try through the winter. I've got the uh, winter heated seat back on. I do have another set of uh, grip puppies up here somewhere. There we go, up there. I don't know if you can see them on the shelf there. Um, so if I do find that I miss the grip puppies uh, on the Beamer, then I'll be putting those on. Otherwise, no changes on the GS. All right, that's it for this time. Hope you enjoyed that. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Miss Them Fly. Cheerio.